Hello, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Abjit. Welcome, everyone. Good, very, good, very, good, very good to see you, Abjit. How are you? <laughs> very well, Fine, very thank well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, sorry, so many people are entering it. It's so hard to keep up where everybody is. Uh, Lovely to see Jasper. you all joining. Hi, Jasper. Hi, Anne. How are you? I don't think you're in front of the Queen's building though, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not. Unfortunately not. <laughs> Good. Whilst we're waiting uh, for others to join, if you'd like to introduce yourself in chat and perhaps write your name <clears throat> and uh, course and year you studied at CCS, that'd be lovely. But I'm going to be embarrass you, Abjit, and I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself. <laughs> because, uh... No worry. I am Abhijit Mukhopadhyay. Uh, I am in the advisory council of uh, CCLS, and uh, in terms of profession, I am the president and general counsel of Hinduja Group, and I am based in their global headquarters in London. And Abhijit's been a very uh, long-standing friend uh, and supporter of the Centre for Commercial Law Studies, so we're very very grateful for him uh, to, to join with us today. So let's embarrass some other people by asking Pranaya, would you like to introduce yourself? Just tell us, yeah, I know, sorry, I picked you out. Uh, would you like to just say hi, when were you at the centre and, and uh, what are you doing there? Are you still on mute? In fact, Justice Deepak Mishra is over here as well. Hello, sir. How are you? Hello, Ajit. Good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome. Thank you. And welcome what? from all committee members. You are in India okay. or you are in London? I'm, I'm in, in India. India right now. That's why I'm saying good evening by our time <laughs> and good afternoon by your time. Hello, sir. Welcome. Hello. hello. Thank you. Hello. Uh, very good to see you. Thank you very much for joining us. So what time Pleasure. is it in India at, at the moment? It's 5.34. 5.34, so it's already dark. Uh, getting dark. Getting dark. <laughs> but in London, it was uh, below zero when I woke up this morning and, and took the dog for a walk. So uh, we do feel very jealous that, that uh, <laughs> we have the heat. That, that's it. Yeah. Good, Celia, so do you want to start us off? So welcome and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the CCLS chapter launch. My name is Celia Blakeway Phillips and I'm the External Relations and Development Manager at CCLS looking after the alumni engagement of our of uh, CCLS alumni. I'm uh, here with my colleague Jane Cloak today who will help um, with the chat. So please do feel free to um, write a little bit about yourself, perhaps your name and uh, years you studied at CCLS and the course. So we're expecting a really great number of you today, including some students, which is really lovely. And uh, this is the fifth of uh, the different, the fifth of the um, welcome events that we've been hosting for uh, the new chapters that have been launched. So it's been a really exciting time. And so the running order of today will be, you'll first of all hear from the director of CCLS, Professor Ian Walden. And uh, after Ian gives his address, you'll hear from the chapter lead, which is uh, Ajit Mishra. And we're honored today to have the company of Mr. Deepak Misra, who's the former Chief Justice of India and who will inaugurate the chapter. But the second part of the event will be quite informal. So it'll be an opportunity for you to um, uh, ask any questions or say anything you'd like, any memories, etc., of your time at CCLS. And after the hour is up, the, uh, there'll be an opportunity for you to uh, chat and network for longer if you so wish, because members of the committee, including Ajit, will be available. 
So I'd like to hand you over now to Professor Ian Walden. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, I would also like to extend my welcome to you all. Um, I hope you're all well and surviving under what are currently very difficult circumstances for everybody. Uh, um, my name is Ian Walden. I'm a professor of information and communications law at the Centre for Commercial Law Studies, and I'm very proud to be the, the director of the, of the Centre for Commercial Law Studies. I have been uh, here at the centre for, for 28 years, so I really um, show a distinct lack of imagination in terms of uh, uh, thinking about other things to do, but I, I feel very proud to be uh, leading the Centre for Commercial Law Studies at this current time. We're here today to initiate a new CCLS alumni chapter for India, which is which, which is a very long overdue development, uh, considering we have such such great numbers of, uh, of of students who have passed through the centre uh, from from India, uh, and the purpose of the chapter is to facilitate uh, professional and social networking amongst yourselves, and to maintain strong and productive ties between the centre and its graduates, because we're very, very proud of. Uh, of having uh, been associated with you and we want to continue to, uh, to uh, provide support uh, and uh, maintain a strong relationship uh, with you. We're also extremely pleased and honoured to have with us Justice Dipak uh, Misra, who is a former, uh, the former Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of India. Uh, in a moment, he's kindly agreed to say a few words to inaugurate the new chapter. Uh, but I just want to say, say a few further things before I hand over to uh, our, our, our chair, um, uh, Ajit uh, Misra. Um, the last time I visited India was in uh, November 2016, travelling to Delhi, Pune and, and Mumbai. It was at the time of the Trump election as the US president and, and I watched the results in a hotel in Pune. Uh, and I must say it, 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 it drove me downstairs to the hotel bar uh, where, where I met actually uh, by accident Dr Liam Fox, who was then the Minister for International Trade under uh, Theresa May's premiership uh, and uh, we spend the rest of the evening commiserating uh, over the, the turn of events in the United States over, over a gin and tonic so it was a very classic English experience um, for me but I, I, I very much enjoyed my, my last trip to India and I look forward to uh, at some point uh, returning there and, and, and visiting more of your, your beautiful country. Um, this year is a very special year for the Centre for Commercial Law Studies because we're celebrating our 40th anniversary. Um, Professor Sir Roy Good set up the Centre for Commercial Law Studies in 1980 uh, and it remains a unique institution within uh, the UK uh, universities but also really a unique institution around the world. Uh, Roy Good's inspiration was essentially he was a commercial lawyer who had become an academic uh, and in 1980 uh, um, there was this division between uh, practitioners who saw academics as, as far too ivory tower and detached uh, and theoretical and, and um, academics who tended to see commercial law as somehow dirty and, and uh, connected with, with, with filthy money. So. Uh, Roy recognised that that was a ridiculous um, uh, distinction and, and the Centre for Commercial Law Studies was set up precisely to bring uh, legal academia, the best of legal academia, uh, together with the best of, uh, of legal practice to really promote uh, commercial law as a critical academic subject and, and, and 40 years later we're, we're still here. Uh, we've expanded hugely uh, since um, uh, Roy established us 40 years ago. We now have uh, some 50 academic uh, members of staff. We have over a thousand students studying with us at, at, at any one time and we have a, a, a network of alumni uh, literally around the world, over 95 different countries we have represented in our alumni. Uh, India being absolutely a critical part of that and hence our, our desire to establish uh, this chapter. Now, 
clearly our 40th anniversary has has not quite gone according to plan. Uh, we we organised a, a whole series of events uh, and and have cancelled a whole series of events uh, as as the lockdown prevented uh, our, our, our dinner, uh, presented a whole series of seminars. But we do hope you've been able to attend some of our online webinars um, uh, that we've been offering and, and continue to offer. In the 40 years since Roy established us, we've continued to expand. Some of you uh, were at the centre a, a number of years ago, some of you very recently, and some of you, as uh, Celia said, are currently studying with us. Um, we now, we, we now offer over 250 opportunities to our current students to engage in some sort of ability related opportunity. Uh, six years ago, uh, we established Q Legal, a pro bono legal advice clinic for, for startups and entrepreneurs. And this year we will be able to offer 180 students on the LLM an opportunity to, to provide some sort of legal advice whether it be on a on a one-to-one -one basis or, or a one-to-many basis. We've established increasing numbers of, of internships and externships. And only last week I signed an agreement with Airbnb uh, for two of our students to actually work in Airbnb's offices in California. Um, unfortunately, they have to do that from London because of the lockdown, but uh, it, it really shows uh, the breadth of our connections and, and the opportunities that we can offer our students to, to ensure that when you study for the LLM, uh, you, you get value added opportunities to, to build your career. And I'll come back to that uh, and how, how you may as alumni help in that activity uh, in a moment. The center is also in, been very proud of the impact that its academic work has had on public policy, law and regulation around the world. And that continues to be a central theme of, 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 of our work. Um, this year, for example, Julia Hornler, who is, uh, uh, again, I'll come back to in a moment, but she's been uh, advising the European Commission and, and regulators around Europe on, uh, on online gambling trying to control the worst abuses and, and uh, uses of online gambling. Duncan Matthews in the intellectual property area has been um, working very hard on helping developing countries get access to medicines, which is clearly very pertinent in an age of, of, of COVID with the, the, the emergence of vaccines. The issue of access to medicines has never been more, more important. And another key value of the centre, as well as bringing together academic and, and practitioners to, to produce excellent research and, and teaching, another value is about the use of commercial law as a tool for e effective development. And in that respect, Rosa Lastra uh, last year established what is known as the Sovereign Debt Forum, which brings together uh, Fordham University uh, and uh, legal advisors to offer pro bono assistance to developing countries like Benin and uh, Grenada and Liberia, Sudan, Togo, to, to help those countries uh, deal with their sovereign debt because of problems of access to, 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 to legal advice. So the centre continues to, to expand in its activities and, and you as alumni of the centre are, are a very important part of our, uh, of our history and a very important part of our future. Uh, and that's what establishing this chapter is about. It's about giving you an opportunity to, to, to come together as a network to, to engage in both professional uh, and social network uh, and to give you an opportunity to, to really give back uh, to the uh, current generation of students. Uh, I've mentioned um, employability opportunities. We offer um, you know, over a hundred mentoring opportunities for, for our current students where um, uh, senior practitioners such as Abjit uh, offer mentoring uh, to uh, our current students to help them talk about their career, to help them think about uh, alternative opportunities within the legal profession. It's not simply about 
entering a law firm, it may be going in-house, it may be becoming a public policy advocate. It, there are so many opportunities uh, for lawyers uh, and we are dedicated to helping uh, lawyers uh, um, develop their careers. Um, and so uh, other opportunities are scholarships and bursaries whereby we can help the next generation get the opportunity to, to study at the centre that you've had. So um, we are establishing the centre today, uh, the, the, the chapter today. Um, in terms of academic leads, uh, Professor Julia Hornler, um, who unfortunately isn't able to join us, will be the academic lead from, from CCLS. Uh, but I'd now like to, to introduce Ajit uh, Mishra, who's uh, a partner at Harrison, Clark and Ricks, Ricksby, Rickersby, uh, and uh, will be the CCLS lead for the Indian chapter. So once again, very uh, warm welcome to you all, uh, but I'd now like to hand over to, to Ajit. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Walden. Thank you so much. And hello and go good afternoon to all of you. And before I start, uh, today is Constitution Day of India, and I wish you all uh, 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 very best for uh, uh, Constitution Day. Uh, today is a very important day, and this cannot be a better day than today to start India chapter. Uh, on this day, back in 1949, uh, Constituent Assembly of India formally adopted uh, Constitution of India, which came in force on 26 January 19, uh, 19, uh, 1950. As chair of India chapter, and on behalf of all committee members who are present over here right now, uh, I warmly welcome you all. I also welcome our chief guest, uh, Justice Deepak Mishra, who has taken out time to inaugurate this chapter. Thank you so much, sir. India chapter aims to bring uh, together uh, a professional and socializing opportunity for, uh, for alumni uh, across India uh, of CCLS. Along with my committee members, we have planned an exciting calendar for, uh, for this year. We have very limited time right now, but we will do something in December and also for next year. Uh, we will have series of events, which will be more informative and engaging and giving opportunity to expand our network in India. We'll keep you all posted. Given the size of Indian market and India as such, I, we, we think, and I'm sure everybody will agree that having only one chapter is not sufficient. We should be having some sub chapters. And I'm very delighted to tell you that uh, uh, we have already laid foundation for Mumbai chapter uh, of CCLS, which will be led by Abhishek Tilak and Dhwani uh, Manikar, who, who is available on this call today. Our central committee uh, comprises of Abhishek, whom I have already mentioned, he will be responsible for Mumbai. But uh, we have Ankit, Krishna, uh, Ravisha, Ojaspita, who's in-house, uh, uh, a lawyer, uh, Yeshwarthan Rani, who is not able to join because of his family circumstances. And we have Zafar, who's a very bright lawyer, and I have known him for quite some time. Uh, if you or any of the committee member, uh, or if you or any of the member have got any suggestion or thoughts about development of this chapter, I would encourage you to get in touch with one of us uh, directly. We all have one ambition to make it big in India. So I congratulate everyone to be part, uh, for being part of this uh, chapter and I wish you all very best. Now I will uh, request Justice Deepak Mishra to please say a few words and formally inaugurate the chapter. Thank you so much. Professor Walden, Director of CCLS, Mr. Ajit Mishra, Chairman of the Indian Chapter, my dear young friends, and ladies and 
gentlemen at the very outset i must without any kind of reservation express my delight that all of you have conceived the idea to celebrate today the indian chapter by bringing it into existence when we are celebrating throughout india the constitution day starting from minor institutes to big universities and from small courts to the supreme court there is celebration that we the people of india had given ourselves by adopting and enacting this constitution i am also extremely exalted that despite the terrorizing times of covid 19 it has not been able to depress the human spirit there is a great old saying mankind may be destroyed but cannot be defeated the organizers today has proven the fact they do not accept defeat and they are not defeated true it is we are meeting through the virtual platform but the desire to meet the desire to perform desire to connect as has been told by the director at the basic principles of progressive humanism i'll pick up two three aspects from the professor's speech he has told you that four decades back there is to some kind of difference of perception between the academia and the lawyers practicing in commercial field it was also so in india in a different way but in last two decades the world view has changed presently the academicians call lawyers to give guest lectures on corporate laws and laws relating to intellectual property contract act and so on and so forth similarly the lawyers also go to the seminars organized by the academician to learn you have to acquaint yourself with the abstract theories and there after to put into utility whoever teaches they do not teach you the nuances of the procedural law because that happens in the practical field and similarly a legal practitioner doesn't propagate abstract theories when i am saying abstract theories theories of law even corporate law or commercial law having said that i must say that united kingdom and india have an inseparable connection 
we are following the Anglo-Saxon jurisprudence, the concept of rule of law, the fundamental conception of free speech. I have read some of the prime ministers of England giving speeches that our democracy stands for freedom of speech and democracy. Similar ideas are also ingrained in our constitution. I will refer to one or two ideas in the judgment of United Kingdom. Centuries back, Edward Koch has said that the king is not under anyone but under law. I'm not exactly quoting him. Lord Denning puts it in a different way, almost borrowing, be you ever so high, the law is above you. Because of his interpretations of law, the people in England fell in love with him. And Lord Denning is deeply appreciated by the legal scholars and the lawyers in India. I was, as a student of law, when I am saying student of law, I also said today I am also, I am a student of law. Please do not misunderstand me as if I was in the university. Unless you remain a continuous student of law, law shall betray you. Denning, Lord Denning, commences a judgment. It's quite interesting. He always wrote in simple English. That may not be my forte, but he was different. The ideas are different. His principles of understanding of law was different. He says, it happened on April 19, 1964. It was blue bell time in Kent. Look at the line, so simple. There is no dramatization, but there is the connection. The Supreme Court of India in 2016, while dealing with a different kind of judgment, commenced in the cold winter of December, so on so. Ideas are connected, precedents are connected, and we have also differed with certain concepts. When I'm saying concepts, maybe the, according to our culture, we have followed a different path, but there is no intellectual difference. At many number of times, the Indian judges and the lawyers cite judgments relating to interpretation of statutes from England before the Indian courts. 
द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ टॉक जजमेंट रिलेटिंग टू नेग्लिजेंस आर साइटेड एंड समटाइम्स एक्सपैंडेड समटाइम्स फॉलो यू सी टूडे वी आर ऑन द ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी in fact we have already spent two decades almost almost a century back maybe a year here or there t s eliot who got the nobel prize for english literature wrote wisdom is lost in knowledge and knowledge is lost in information till 90s it was regarded as a great idea it's a great idea but in today's world information does not mean gossip information is the gateway to knowledge now unless you are well acquainted with various concepts of corporate law or intellectual property rights contract act arbitration law or what are the other legislations that have come into existence if it in india or in england you will not be able to grow so therefore i just refer to him to say as that the information is extremely important because that's a step towards knowledge and you all of you as alumni of the university will assist the center to grow in getting the requisite knowledge another aspect i am reminded of which i must tell you 10 days back i was reading a book where a court of judge bonnard so man born in ireland came to england stayed in england and established himself through the throughout the english speaking world the court is youth is wasted on the young i repeat for impact youth is wasted on the young today i request all of you to understand this and simultaneously politely disagree i believe in the wisdom of the youth i believe that they have the ability and the potentiality to build an institution and that is why the university has conceived the india chapter and as mr misra has said that the india chapter will not be the singular chapter it will be further sub subdivided like bombay chapter delhi chapter calcutta chapter or other chapters as the organizers would thought up thick opposite but unless you take the youth with you you cannot grow and as i see we have lot of young vibrant energetic intellectuals with us and i must admit the professor to me looked quite energetic and vibrant and i mean it in conclusion i would like to state i wish the center to come up i have my best wishes of the india center of ccls and i congratulate professor walden 
and his colleagues and mr ajit mishra the chairman of the committee and all the committee members and we so very best for the progress and expansion of the center i have no innovation in stating i am extremely delighted to announce the launch of the india chapter of ccls my best wishes from the core of my heart thank you thank you very much thank you very much thank you very much indeed I'm not sure whether this is working, but we've tried to try to give a bit of sparkle uh, from a distance, and I'll presume on the basis that uh, that's that seemed to work. Uh, please tell, tell me otherwise. So, uh, thank you very much indeed for that that very generous <coughs> and, and, and warm welcome. Thank you. So I'll, I'll now hand back to our our our, our chair, um, Mr. Mizra. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it was it was a pleasure to have you, and uh, we will come back to you always uh, whenever we need any guidance and support. And I hope you will be available as you were available today. Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, now we move on to a, a more informal. Uh, opportunity for, for, for people to uh, tell us what they're doing and, and how they're doing it. And, uh, so I'm going to pick on people to just tell us who you are, what you're doing, and uh, you know anything else you'd like to tell us. And I'm going to be unfair and pick on a random basis. So uh, Suditi, uh, you get picked first. Welcome. Oh, yeah. I was the only one who actually volunteered information without being picked on, <laughs> but okay, it is really- That's really one amazing. of the reasons why you came to my attention. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually too cold to speak my joys kind of blog, but, um, but it's really an honor to be on the same call as all of you. And um, just as Deepak Mishra, absolute honor. Abhijit Mukhopadhyay, sir, uh, I was actually lucky that you had a guest lecture uh, in my batch when I was actually studying last year and I meant to connect. We had a small sh short word, but it was just fabulous. And Ajit Mishra, so we've been connecting on LinkedIn and this was b before we even came on the call. So this is all very great. But yes, I, as I said, I kind of got very lucky that I applied to the Q Legal Externship Program. It's a very short year. Like when you come to study abroad for an LLM or something, it feels like it's a whole year, but it, goes by in a blink. So it's just like when you pick on opportunities, you just like have to really grab them with both hands. But I joined that externship program and I was placed in a legal tech company. It's not exactly legal tech, um, but we kind of uh, do business development for legal tech. And since legal tech was not a very big thing in India, when I left the country two years ago, <clears throat> it's growing quite fast. And we are obviously trying to figure things out, but it was very a very big curiosity for me. So I kind of just uh, was very excited with the externship opportunity. And I got very fortunate that they were growing too, like the company I was working with, Cosmonauts. And I joined them part-time and then they took me on full-time and they sponsored, were very kind to sponsor my visa. Um, and yes, I'm currently working there, learning a lot about legal tech, because from what we do, we kind of get the whole bird's eye perspective on the whole legal tech market in London, EU, uh, America even. And now it kind of, I am launching the Singapore legal tech aspect, which is like covering all of APAC. So it's just like, it's a very good opportunity for me to learn. And I couldn't have expected any more from a study abroad program. So. Thank you for all of that, uh, making all of that possible. Excellent. Uh, and we will be starting a uh, an LLM module in uh, legal tech uh, 
uh, next academic year, so I will be bothering you uh, <laughs> for, for at least a lecture. <laughs> I, I, I do not know how uh, able, I, I mean, yeah, I would love to do it if I can help, but if I have anything to provide, but I'm sure there's still a lot of lot to learn from me as well. Uh, but yes, I would be happy to be involved. Thank you. I'm not going to ask some of the other committee members to, to, to just introduce themselves. Uh, so I'm going to start with uh, Zafar. Would you just like to say uh, welcome to everybody? I'm very, very grateful to all those that have joined the committee. I somehow somehow knew it was going to be reversed alphabetically. Uh, <laughs> well, as a, Walden, <laughs> as a Walden, I've always been at the end of the queue. So it's, nice to, <laughs> it's nice to meet a Z who, who goes first. Uh, uh, yes, uh, thank you for calling on me, Ian, and absolutely wonderful to be part of this initiative. Uh, great to see so many people. I, I, I have been uh, diligently scrolling through the participants, and it's great to see a lot of names that I recognize uh, from my year at Queen Mary, uh, and even greater to see so many others from before and after uh, the time that I was there. Uh, I, I did my LLM in intellectual property law in 2012. I graduated in 2013. Uh, after that, I, uh, I moved. I obviously did not have enough of England. Queen Mary left such an impression. I went Northwest for a couple of years. I, uh, I, I, I did another LLM after that at Oxford University. Since then, I have been back in England uh, practicing in the Supreme Court, the High Court, and the various tribunals here in Delhi. Uh, as of 2020, I have started my own firm uh, based here in Delhi, uh, and I specialize in intellectual property law, and that's something that I have to give entirely the credit to Queen Mary, because uh, the structure of the LLM there and the, the sheer choice in uh, specific areas for me, for intellectual property, which I did, I actually combined with cyberspace and online law, uh, under uh, Ms. Honle, so uh, it'd be, it would be wonderful to reconnect with her as well as the chapter progresses. Uh, but I think that I really have to thank Queen Mary uh, for inspiring a, uh, a spark for studying the law. Uh, that's not to say that India doesn't have great professors as well, but I think that I didn't really achieve my full potential until I came there and I was taught not just how to study the law, but how to enjoy studying the law. So I, I'm, I'm always, I shall always be eternally grateful to Queen Mary for that. And the, uh, the camaraderie and the uh, ambiance, the environment that CCLS created for those studies is, is invaluable. Uh, and I, 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 I'm sure that many of you feel the same and it's great to see you all here to celebrate that. Great, thank you very much. And I, I like you, I'm still trying to reach my potential. I, I, I know one day I'll get there, but not quite yet. Uh, thank you very much. Can I hand over to uh, Astrid Vita? Hi. Hello, Professor. Uh, hello, everyone. Lovely to meet you all. Lovely to see so many participants here. Uh, it's an honor to hear Justice uh, Mishra. Thank you so much. Uh, for sharing your wisdom. Uh, to introduce myself, I am Ujaswata Shrivastava. I'm presently the general counsel at uh, Securitas Amiya. Uh, I studied uh, commercial and corporate laws at CCLS uh, in 2013-14. Uh, I was there on a sabbatical. Uh, and I have to say the amount of growth that I had during that one year uh, cannot be compared to any of the other experiences. Uh, not just in terms of the amount of knowledge that you get, but also in terms of the exposure, uh, the amount of, uh, uh, you know, networking that you get to meet so many lawyers from so many countries. Um, I was uh, three years into the profession when I went there, uh, and uh, that network that I had uh, developed during that time has actually, you know, come in handy now during my work uh, as a general counsel working across the region because if I need help in Hong Kong or in Indonesia or in Egypt, I always have a batchmate or, or somebody from CCLS who I know uh, via LinkedIn that I can reach out to and you know, get help. Uh, also uh, in my NGO that I run Project Abhimanyu also, having the CCLS connection has really helped me a lot. A lot of our uh, uh, alumni have gotten involved. 
Uh, in fact, I met uh, Mr. Mishra, Mr. Ajit Mishra in London during my course there. Uh, so definitely there is something about CCLS uh, that uh, you know, allows you to come out of that shell that you have been living in, uh, say when you are working in India or practicing in a court, because then you're just limited to your network. But CCLS really gives you that global perspective that allows you to grow as a professional and allows you to grow beyond what you could do uh, living in the same place that you are. So I really thank everybody you know, for joining us today. As a committee member, I would invite all of you to become more active with the chapter. There's so much more we can help to grow. There's so many students who go there every year to study, come back and you know, uh, try to get back into the profession. There's so much more we can do for them. There's so much more we can help guide students who are planning to go for um, uh, NLLM and study at CCLS. So uh, I'm looking forward to interacting with more of you uh, and congratulations to everyone again on the successful launch of this chapter. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I, I think I'd like to pick up particularly on that, that issue of, of, of helping others is we have a, an extensive mentoring scheme uh, where you get you get paired up with a, a current student uh, and it doesn't take up much time but it's it's a real opportunity for, for a student to, to, to hear from somebody who's in practice to, to think about their career to talk to people about their their potential the direction in which they go and so I'd re very much encourage you if you if you uh, would would like to, to become a mentor we can give you further details about that and and uh, you'll find it uh, potentially a lifelong uh, friend but but the the students so uh, get so much value out of, of that relationship so please do consider Absolutely. it now sorry so i'll, I'll just turn it over to yes, thank you. just because he's on a, a mobile phone so hey hi hi thank you professor walden uh Good evening, everyone, for those who are in India and afternoon for those who've uh, logged in from the UK. Uh, to introduce myself, my name is Ankit. I, like Zafar, was a part of the 2012-13 batch of uh, CCLS. I did my master's in banking and finance laws. And uh, ever since I graduated, I've come back to India and I've been a part of uh, a law firm called Juriscop here in India. Uh, since uh, graduating from Queen Mary and I've been with the firm for the last seven years now, presently a principal associate. My, for my forte, of course, lies in banking and finance, which was my specialism. Uh, I would like to, of course, uh, uh, congratulate everyone for this inauguration of the India chapter and uh, thank you again to uh, Justice Deepak Mishra for, uh, for his kind words and for his encouragement. And uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, interacting with everyone and, uh, you know, building upon this chapter. And as Ajit said, this is just a start. Uh, we've just uh, found our way into forming a committee and we look forward to participation from people across batches and really building upon, uh, you know, city specific or state specific chapters uh, within the broader group and uh, look forward to your help and support in that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, a number of you have uh, an impressive bookcase behind you, but uh, one of those is a committee member, uh, Rafsha. So I'll hand over to you. Uh, not your own books, I understand, but very impressive set of books anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Walden. Uh, so I'm Ravisha Gupta, based in New Delhi right now. And I completed my LLM in intellectual property laws in 2014-15. Uh, um, I'd like to thank Justice Deepak Mishra for launching the chapter. I'm honored to be one of the committee members. Um, it's a, I think it's a great initiative that you know we've uh, started with this it, to build upon a community um, in India. And there are so many of us. Uh, it's it's really great to see all of you here. Um, like Ajaswita said, you know, uh, the year at CCLS, it's just not about gaining an LLM or the knowledge. It's a lifetime experience. I think it just, you know, uh, gives you so much confidence and it exposes you to so much that it is just such a wonderful experience that, you know, I'm not always able to describe it. And um, even today, you know, uh, with all the activities that keep uh, happening and whatever uh, is going on with this chapter also it's a, it gives me a sense of belonging and it's just uh, really nice you know to have that sort of community to fall back on that 
like just with i said you know we have people all over the world that we can just you know connect with and uh, there are people to help as lawyers of course we need help all the time and it's a great way to just uh, connect uh, in a way and it's really lovely really looking forward to uh, building up and you know having more events doing more things we would love suggestions from uh, people uh, what we can do and you know how else we can uh, take this forward so welcome to everyone and uh, yeah looking forward thank you okay so let's travel to the other side of the world to san francisco uh, to, to speak to Krishan, who probably isn't in San Francisco. Uh, yeah, and thank you, Professor. And uh, definitely, I'm in India. Mm, uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, thank you, Justice Mishra, for uh, taking time out uh, to grace the event. And uh, uh, a lot has already been uh, said by all my colleagues, uh, committee members. But uh, I would uh, uh, take an advantage to share my experience of CCLS and uh, a uh, few minutes back, I was talking to Professor Ian Weldon. Uh, just a few months back before COVID, we have been talking on so many issues because I just graduated in 2020 and my specialization at CCLS was arbitration. As far as my uh, professional experience is concerned, I am working for National Oil Company of India. And uh, uh, this was my sabbatical for a year. I did my second master's at Green Mary with Chevening Scholarship. Before that, I worked in different uh, policy matters and regulation of oil and gas upstream sector in India. Uh, as uh, Ajit has already mentioned that we have discussed uh, uh, so many things about uh, the events which we are planning for the um, CCLS India chapter. And we, uh, I just wanted to make it sure, uh, clear to every member of the chapter that it is your chapter, it is for you and by you. So we always uh, we are always open to your ideas, and uh, Ravisha has mentioned also mentioned about mentoring and helping uh, all the uh, latest graduates or helping to those who really wish to pursue their masters and tell them that how Queen Mary is special uh, in terms of uh, uh, being uh, specialized courses in terms of employ employability opportunities etc etc. I, I, by virtue of my experience, uh, in fact, uh, I, I can see a few of the members in this meeting whom I could, uh, for whom I could give the recommendation uh, just uh, in during this uh, COVID time and they were employed by uh, uh, those recommendations. Uh, Professor Ian, I am happy to mention that from my batch only, I recommended four guys and they are employed in India now with my recommendation. So we, uh, we really look forward to build such uh, network uh, with CCS, uh, CCLS Alumni India so that uh, the newer lords can be uh, can get, get all kind of assistance from the seniors and uh, yes we look forward to work with you and uh, feel free to reach any of us thank you brilliant thank you very much indeed so I would like to open the floor to anybody that would like to, to but before that uh, can I interrupt yes uh, please I'll have <laughs> <laughs> Abhishek Tilak is over here. He's also part of a uh, uh, committee who's responsible for Mumbai chapter. So we would like to listen to him as well. Yeah. Thanks, Ajit. Uh, thanks, Ian. Uh, it has been an honor to hear from Justice Mishra to flag off the India chapter. I resonate and second uh, all the things that uh, all my committee members have already said about uh, the journey in the Queen Mary. I came to Queen Mary. Uh, as an experienced practitioner, I had already done my three years of practice and uh, completed my LLM in tax law. And it kind of helped me to push my envelope and expand my practice in, in the field of international tax and transfer pricing. Uh, after completing my LLM, I have come back to India. I have been practicing as a counsel in the uh, Supreme Court, High Court, and various tribunals across the country. Uh, as a committee member, I would urge all the members to really step forward and um, kind of help grow the chapters and uh, help current and prospective students in their journey at career. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And I uh, yeah. apologize for, for missing you out in the first round. No problem. So now <laughs> I'd like to open up to, to just anybody that would like to uh, say anything or, or just or reconnect with somebody they haven't seen for, for a while. So 
uh, plead anybody. Uh, Bikram? Yes, thank you, Professor Warden. Uh, I was actually keen to just bring in two points. First, just say it's nice to see you again, especially fading in and out of the queen today. All of that. Um, the second thing is, uh, Justice Mishra uh, mentioned a quote of Lord Denning uh, and he said a couple of lines. Um, my ears within my headphones kind of broke up at that because I've actually read uh, quite a bit of that quote. I was hoping I could uh, sort of add a little bit of context uh, there and share that with all of you, my young colleagues and professor. And of course, I'm tired of speaking for judge uh, as well, who no doubt is already aware of it. Uh, the context in which uh, I'm sharing, <laughs> Vagis, thank you. What's up to you as well? So he's chatting with you. Um, my name is Bikram Chaudhary. I studied in the Comparative uh, and International Dispute Resolution uh, Masters in 2017 2018 in the School of International Arbitration and CCLS. I currently work in the International Arbitration Team at a firm in India called Shrantanamacha Mandadas and based out of Mumbai. Uh, I wanted to read this passage out. I'm sorry if it seems a little tedious because one of the things that I personally learned in uh, during my time at Queen Mary and shortly, uh, I was working with uh, Sir Bernard Riggs, who's also connected with CCLS for a short amount of time, was his arbitrary assistant there. No, so for the brief period of time, yes, uh, that I was there, one of the things that I'm most grateful to have picked up is uh, an understanding of uh, written and oral advocacy um, in the UK, as well as to some extent uh, from other jurisdictions, which I got to see as uh, Sir, Sir Bernard Ricks' uh, assistant. Uh, and that is why I felt it important to just quickly read this passage once more as an excellent example of what written advocacy can actually be. I'm quite sure Justice Mishra was pointing to our telling for precisely this reason. So if you'll bear with me, um, it, it has quite a twist. It starts, it happened on April 19th, 1964. It was bluebell time in Kent. Mr. and Mrs. Hines had been married some 10 years and they had four children, all aged nine and under. The youngest one, the youngest was one. Mrs. Hines was a remarkable woman. In addition to her own four, she was foster mother to four other children. To add to it, she was two months pregnant with her fifth child. On this day, they drove out in a Bedford Dormobile van from Tunbridge to Canvey Island. They took all eight children with them. As they were coming back, they turned into a lay-by at Turnham to have a picnic tea. The husband, Mr. Hines, was at the back of the Dormobile making the tea. Mrs. Hines had taken Stephanie, her third child, aged three, across the road to take bluebells on the opposite side. There came along a Jaguar car, driven by Mr. Berry, out of control. A tire had burst. The Jaguar rushed into this lay-by and crashed into Mrs. Hines and the children. Mr. Hines was frightfully, uh, crashed into Mr. Hines and the children, sorry. Mr. Hines was frightfully injured and died a little later. Nearly all the children were hurt. Blood was streaming from their heads. Mrs. Hines, hearing the crash, turned around and saw this disaster. She ran across the road and did all she could. Her husband was beyond recall, but the children recovered. I apologize for the grimness of this particular passage, but there is a very important reason why I read it out to all of us. Uh, and, I start, and I preface this with uh, the fact that written and oral advocacy was one of the best things that I could pick up while, uh, while I learned in the experiences that I had thereafter. All of these sentences that I've just read out to you, if you will notice, are very short. Almost none of them have conjunctions. They are active, they're in active voice. They paint a picture of the scenario that Lord Henning was trying to explain in his judgment. And ultimately, it is so vivid that you almost feel like you are there. Uh, which is horrifying in this circumstance, but the bottom line remains that one of the things as Indian practitioners that I personally feel we all 
can really pick up from our wonderful, wonderful individual experiences uh, at CCLS, at QM in London, and Mr. Hopi can continue to invite, is this excellent facility in trying to speak and write in active voice, in trying to be as simple as possible in our speech. Just as Mishra rather modestly said that uh, while comparing uh, Lord Deming's facility in the English language, he rather modestly said that perhaps he doesn't share the same privilege. Um, but perhaps we all need to work towards uh, this sort of simplicity and picturesqueness in our writing. And that will be a lasting contribution that our time in London would have served us. So sorry for the sermon, but I thought that this would be helpful for all of us. Thank you very much indeed. That was that was that was very kind and and, and lovely. Uh, Trupti. Um, yes, I hope I'm audible. So I mean, uh, the thought uh, that Vikram shared was in fact uh, really thought provoking, and uh, I think as a new uh, professional, I would definitely want to work on that. So uh, yes, before introducing myself, uh, I would just like to say that I'm humbled to share this call with all of you. My regards to the professor and it's an honor uh, to be here today and I'm Trupti Panigrahi. I just graduated this year and I, di I did specialize in intellectual property law and to be honest uh, Queen Mary was just one university which uh, impressed me with the kind of modules that they had, the structure and everything else. In fact every other university uh, with no disrespect intended, but any other university, uh, even the top ones, uh, they did not have uh, uh, the structure that any that a student would like to prefer. The kind of flexibility, or uh, you know, the kind of interactions that are there in the structure, and uh, and everything else, things like video games laws, and things like uh, entertainment law, things like films, music, everything else was was amazing. And I could pick up from the culture and now I am, in fact, it's, it's wonderful to share that in the second month of starting my LLM, I got placed and uh, I'm now working as an assistant lecturer for Jindal Global University. So I, I try to, uh, you know, I try, I try to uh, give my students what I learned from the university uh, back in CCLS, especially the culture which was, I remember um, we had a professor and my, my batchmates would agree that we went to uh, you know, after every lecture on Wednesday, Professor Gaetano would take us to Barpolsky to interact and have this informal discussion where we had, uh, where we could talk about anything and everything uh, with respect to law and uh, what was going on in our lives. So that kind of setup actually gives us the confidence to reach out to people and, you know, uh, going to an entirely new setup uh, from India. I've always lived at home. So going to that setup and interacting with uh, people uh, really made me a much more confident person. And uh, yes, talking about initiatives uh, with respect to this chapter, I'm really glad to be a part of this chapter and talking about initiatives and sub chapters. I would uh, want to see uh, the launch of an Odessa chapter really soon because uh, back there, I just noticed that, you know, I had a lot of friends from uh, Delhi, NCR, Bombay, but I could not really find anybody from the other parts of the country, which was a little sad. So maybe we can launch uh, chapters in, in states that uh, have a little less of representation. And perhaps Odessa being my home state, I would like to you know, take that initiative and launch that chapter. And uh, maybe we can call Justice Mishra again for that launch. Uh, so we have amazing talent for, uh, from Odessa. Uh, just as Mishra himself. So uh, yes, I'm looking forward to that. So congratulations to everybody and thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I, I can't possibly uh, hope that your parents don't mind that you got taken to a bar after every lecture. But I'm very glad you enjoyed your time. Now, um, Ian, 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 sorry, I have such a bad manner of interrupting. Sorry no, about no, that. No, no. <laughs> You're, uh, you're in charge. <laughs> uh, Justice Mr. has got a busy schedule, yeah. and he he would like to leave. Uh, uh, but before he leaves, I would like to say again thanks for on behalf of all members and our committee members for you to take out time and make it so memorable for all of us. Thank you so much, Justice Mishra. Thank you very much indeed.
Thank you. But before I part, I'll put a question to the lady. Tripti, you are from which part of Orissa? Uh, sir, Katak. Katak, which part? Uh, sir, actually, I've never lived in Odisha, but Khordha to be precise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was our old subdivision district. Anyway. Yes. yes. So, that is why she said that I am from Odisha also. We are now deciding, we are now really connecting ourselves territorially. Right. Professor, I think we'll appreciate that. Thank you very okay. much. Indeed. Thank All you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So uh, we will also have to leave you, but uh, Ajit, you can continue to, uh, uh, you know, everybody can continue to talk. So please do. Uh, we've got a little poll that we'd like you to, to, to fill in if you, have, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, but other than that, Thank you so much for all your time today. I look forward to seeing you all uh, again in the future and uh, have a very good, uh, the remainder of the Constitution Day. Uh, and uh, please feel free to stay on as long as you like. Take care. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Tripti, of course, you can get in touch with one of us. Uh, Orissa is an important jurisdiction, I know, for natural resources and whatnot. Uh, in past, uh, I acted for po POSCO in Orissa. So it's an important jurisdiction for us. So, uh, of course, let's let's start conversation about Orissa chapter. Who else would like to uh, 